Hey, it's Rainiacs, Mel the Terrain Shooter, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make For You. Now, we're continuing our series of Battlefield Basics and we've already covered infantry obstacles, including Czech Hedgehogs, and they're in the Let's Play Make playlist. In this video, what I want to look at is more concretely poured Dragon's Teeth tank traps. So, with that in mind, let's head over to the bench and get cracked on. Come on! Right, guys, when it comes to making tank traps, yeah, we're going to start off with probably the cheapest and easiest way of doing it. And it's probably one of the most old school ways of doing it. For a long, long time, people have been making tank traps out of the little inserts inside of egg cups. But time has moved on. We now have these things. And these are seed planters. You know, you drop your seeds in, a bit of flour, you know, water them, let them grow, then plant them. And the cardboard all dissolves. Yeah, but if you look, don't they look perfect? Yeah, for tank traps. Yeah, so what we do is we pull them out, he says, and once we've got them pulled out, next job is just to separate them, yeah, just like that. Now obviously we only need the top of this, okay, so what I'm going to do is with a pair of scissors, yeah, I'm just going to put a cut, sort of a third of the, halfway up say, and then just tear it, yeah, with my fingers. Badly. And you end up with that. The next job is obviously that's a bit raggedy. You can come in with a pair of scissors and trim it with that. I actually prefer a pair of clippers. It gives me a little bit more control. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in. And I'm just going to start clipping these round. Yeah, and you can see what I'm doing there. Yeah, so I'm going to go right round. Yeah, I'm going to clip these all the way round. And I'll come back once it's done. And there you are, all done. How cool is that? Dead easy, cut it out, clip it, square it up. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two more of those and then we'll come back and glue them on, yeah? See you in a sec. So we've got our tank traps and the next job is to glue them onto our EPVC. And for this, I'm just gonna use a little bit of PVA. I could use hot glue, I could use a gel super glue, but it's just as easy, just drop it on with this stuff. And it's just a matter of running it around the edge Yeah, just like that. And then picking it, slap it slap back in the middle. Yeah, and then all I'm gonna do is add the others. So they're all done now, and there you go. Yep, there we go. How lovely do they look? Right, I'm gonna leave these to dry and then we'll grit them up afterwards. So while they're drying, let's crack on with some more. Now the next technique I wanna show you is actually using these. Yeah, now, you could, if you wanted, just hack and slash this, clip it out and use these directly. But I'm actually going to use this as a mould. And I'm going to fill it with air drying clay. Specifically, DAS. And it's a dead simple task. Yeah, all we're going to do is grab our clay out. Yeah. And then push it in. And we're just going to fill these up. Yeah, you need to push them down. It won't stick to the plastic. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Yeah, but all we're going to do is fill those up. And I'm going to carry on filling until I've got, say, three or four of them filled. Yeah, so grabbing that out, pushing it in there, nice and firm, and smoothing over the top. Yeah, better crack on, Anna. Right, guys, they're all filled in now, yeah, but they're a little bit sort of all over the place. So the next job is just with a, a sharp knife. Yeah, I'm doing it with this. I'm just going to come along, yeah, and just clean them up. Yeah. And you can see what I'm doing there, yeah? So I'll crack on with this and come back once they're clean. And there they are, all nice and clean. Now you will sort of move them from the edges, so just put your thumb in. Yeah, and just make sure you squeeze them, all that putty, right to the edges. Yeah, it's highly unlikely you'll get it perfect, guys, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, but you can just weather up any sort of little discrepancies as, as sort of chips and damage. But there we are. Right, they're in now. All we need to do is wait for these to dry and then we will mount them to our EPVC. So, let's leave these to dry. 24 hours, guys. There we go. They're not quite dry, but it's a little bit nippy in my studio, to be perfectly honest. You, they'll probably dry for you a lot better because you'll be in a lovely warm house. Right, should we pop them out? Come on out, you come. Oh, there we go. And if I bring it up, Tank trap, yeah? Now, these do need to dry a little bit longer, so I think I'm gonna leave those a little bit longer to dry. I'm gonna pop the rest out, and then all I'm gonna do, yeah, is glue them onto my bases. Yeah? Right, I'll crack on, and then we'll come back when these are dried and all glued up. 
Now for the third and final technique, we're going to revert back to, you know, a terrain builder's trusted material. High density foam. Now this is probably the highest density stuff you can get. Yeah, I get it from a company called Panel Systems. You can use any sort of foam for this. You can even use the expanded stuff as long as your blade is sharp enough. Yeah, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a strip out of this and it's going to be about an inch wide and then I'm going to cut it into one inch cubes. Okay, so I'll crack on with that. Obviously watch your fingers. Seriously watch your fingers. You know what I like with knives. Yeah, and then all I'm going to do is get my blade and just cut through it until I get a nice clean cut. So we cut out our cubes and now it's time to shape them. Now, tank traps, there, there were tank traps that were essentially square blocks, so you could actually get away with just whacking that down. But, you know, we like to take it further. Now all I've got to do is bevel it off. So with this in mind, I'm coming along and I'm just taking it sort of four or five mil from the top edge and lining it up with the bottom. Yeah? So if I bring that round, if I bring that up like that, you can see I'm basically taking that edge off. Yeah, and same on the other side. Yeah, and we're at that stage. Now that's perfectly fine, but I want to bevel them off again. Yeah, so, very quickly. And there you have it. There's your rough tank shape. Tank trap. Dragon's tooth. Yeah. Right, I'm going to crack on with this. I'll come back once they're done. So those are all done now. Yeah, really easy to put together. It can be a bit fiddly to get them perfect. So be forgiving on yourself. You know what I mean? Unless you're using a precision cutting machine, you're going to struggle. Yeah, so get them as close as you can. Now, these were concrete and typically they were poured within moulds, yeah, that were made out of concrete planks. And in between the planks you would get bulges and so you get lines on them. Okay, now, technically these are lines that bulge out because it's a little bit of concrete seeping between the planking of the moulding. But in wargaming what we typically do is we represent them with lines, engraved lines when we're doing foam. So all I'm doing is I'm getting a biro, I've got my, my tank trap and then very carefully I just want to score a straight line on it. Yeah, there you go, as straight as I can reasonably do it. And all I'm going to do is copy this round and then do another one on the bottom. Yeah, just with a pen, nothing special. So they're done now and mounted. One of the other things is I've just got the end of that brush. Yeah, and I've just pushed into the top to give them a little dip, just to break that up a bit. Oh, my PVA is running on this one. And then just finally to wrap it off, all you've got to do is a bit of PVA. Yeah, and drop it down, just position it. There you go. Don't they look lovely? Right, got to put these up to dry, and then once they're dry, what we'll do is we'll come back and grit them, and we'll grip the others one while we do. We'll grip the other ones while we're doing it. Yeah. Right. See you shortly, guys. Right, they're all glued down now, and it's time to grit this up. Now, I'm going to be using my standard basing grit, which is a mixture of some fine sand and very, very, what you call it, sort of tiny, tiny little rocks. You can see it there, can't you? Okay, and all I'm going to do is basically PVA out my tub. It's here. Yeah, lay on a bit of PVA onto there. And then just basically give it a good coating and pour this over the top. It's as simple as that, guys. So I'll do that now and I'll show you once it's done. There we go. Don't they look lovely? Right, I'll get the others done and then we'll come back when they're all finally dry and ready for painting, guys. See you in a sec. Right, they're all gritted up now and they're looking rather nice, okay? Time to start painting them up. Yeah, I've got a brown, yeah, just standard house paint watered down a little. Yeah, and a grey. I blobbed them on my paint and I've put a little blob of PVA in with them. Yeah, just to help you know, hold the grit in and everything, because I haven't sealed these. Now, first off, I'm going to do the tank traps grey, and then I'm going to do the ground brown, and then, you know, we can take it from there. Yeah, and, you know, it's painted foam, you know what I mean? Yeah, you get your brush, you paint it on. Simples! Right, let's come back when these are done. Okay, guys, these have got a solid base coat on, and like I said, gone for the dark, dark grey and dark brown for the, the base. And they look quite all right, but it's time to paint them up a little bit more. Now, we've got a couple of options. Uh, with these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do basic dry brushing. Yeah, so all I'm going to do is, you know, 
and get the right brush, eh? Yeah. Bit of paint. Bit of cardboard. You know, take all the excess paint off the brush. And then just simply come along. And all I'm going to do is... Yeah, start highlighting them up. Yeah. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a bit of a highlight. I'll go over it with another lighter little shade. Yeah, just to finish it off. Uh, I'm going to do the same on these. Yeah, and then with these we'll come back and I'll show you a different tech with those. Yeah. So, I'm going to crack on with dry brushing these and I'll bring them back once they're done, guys. Okay. So that's them dry brushed up, guys. Yeah, do they look nice? Yeah, rather nice indeed. And we pull this one up. Yeah, they even they drew, you know, for cheap and simple, even they dry brush up lovely. Yeah, they're not quite finished. We need to weather them with a little bit of browns and stuff like that first. Yeah, but I want to do these next. Now, the problem with the uh, ice cube ones is, as you can see, they're rather smooth, which means they don't really take dry brushing that well. And so in the case of this one, I'm going to be using a little bit of a sponge and I'm going to be stippling them. Yeah, I'm basically putting lots and lots of different colours on them. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll do them like this. I'll go in with another colour, slightly lighter. I'll stipple it with that. Yeah, and then we'll wash them all back when we do these. So I'm going to crack on and just, literally just stipple them. Just like that. Yeah. And then we'll come back when they're done, yeah? So there we are, guys. These ones have been dry brushed and they're looking rather nice. Yeah, I've already shown you those, haven't I? And then we've got our stipple ones. And you can see how just a couple of colours stippled on really does give a lovely effect. And the next job is we need to weather these up a bit because they're a bit grey, okay? And so for that, what I've done is I've got a little bit of brown on there and I've got a little bit of dark brown. I'm going to use quite a bit of water, yeah, to thin these down. I'll, I'll go with the darkest first. I don't know why, just because I am, yeah? And that'll give me, like, a very thin opaque wash. I get this, yeah, just a little bit. And all I'm going to do is come along a couple of blobs around it, yeah? Just like that. Then get water. Yeah. Spread it out a bit. Spread those blobs out a bit. Thin them down. You've got to be pretty quick with this. What you don't want is your blobs to actually dry on your piece, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And then, because they'll look like blobs of paint. Yeah. So I'll bring it in here. A couple more blobs. Spread it about a bit. Oh bit too much there yeah. and if I bring it up can you see the little shading that gives it it's not much but it makes such a difference now all I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with this brown and this brown and literally just a little dab with water down then go in with a lot of water and just swill it round a bit and just get that shade on it yeah that's all you need to do it's dead simple and it's so effective yeah there's no specific places to put it. You can put it more weathered around the bottom and that sort of stuff. And, you know, you can, uh, you can do your dirt track marks if you want to. But generally, if you just want to tone them down and sort of get them off that grayscale, just whack it wherever you want, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. That's what terrain's about. Right. I'll get these. And then when they're all washed up, I'll bring them back. Yeah. I'll see. That's the washes done. And don't they look quite nice? Yeah, that one. I've got these. Yeah, you can see how that's just taken the tint off just enough to, you know, make it a little bit more realistic. I mean, you can spend as long as you want washing and weathering these up. You can go to absolute town on them. Yeah, but it doesn't actually take much to, to just break that grey up. Okay, so don't think you have to. Right, now, next job is obviously to get them flocked up. Now, for this, yeah, I've got some PVA on my plate. Yeah, I'm just going to get some on my brush and I'm going to, going to start brushing it onto my piece. Yeah. Once we've got it all brushed on, we'll get it flocked up with this stuff here. So I'll carry on brushing it on and then we'll come back when we're ready to flock it up. Yeah. So that's all PVA'd up now. And as you can see, it's a really nice thin coat. You don't need to put a heavy coat on these things. Now I'm going to do a quick two tone. So I'm going to do some spotting. So I'm just going to drop some really dark green in a few different places. Yeah, just to break up my flock. Yeah. Around there, yeah, just like that. I'll put a bit in there where it'd be naturally damper in between the two. They wouldn't dry out as well, would they? And then all I'm going to do is straighten there. Yeah. Tap it off. Blow it. 
And there you have it guys. How easy is that? How nice is that? Beautiful. Right, I'm going to crack on and do the other ones and then we'll come back when they're done, yeah? So there we have it guys, that's the two-tone flocking done. And they look lovely. Now the only last little thing is we need to add a little bit of terrain garnish. So for this I've got some army painted tufts. Yeah, I quite like them, you know, you can go for any tufts you want. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a couple of these on. Yeah, we'll drop a few on these. Yeah. I'll drop another one there. Yeah, just uh, These are self-adhesive so you can just drop those on. Yeah, and then finally... A little bit of clump foliage. Now what I'm going to do is, yeah, grab a little bit of clump foliage. I've got a bit of PVA on the plate there. So I can grab a bit of PVA. I can decide where I'm going to put it. Yeah, and just tap it down. You probably can't even see that, but there you go. Yeah, and this is just, you know, garnishing the base. Now, all I'm going to do now is we'll get these garnished up. Yeah. So guys, they are. That's them all garnished up, and if I bring them up, yeah, first off, our high-density foam, cut, engraved, dry-brushed and washed, and they look beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Remember, we've used a tiny amount of foam, yeah? You used to watch the brush just to get those recesses at the top, and they look really, really nice, yeah? So, moving down. Next off, we've got the bottom of our planters. Yeah, once again, really cheap and simple. I mean, a quid for, what, 30 planters, so 30 tank traps, if you want to do that. And they look lovely. Yeah, and then finally, we've got our DAS modelling putty that we've wedged in our, what you call it, in our uh, ice cube moulds. And these have come out really, really nice. I do like these. Yeah. Okay, admittedly, they're not exactly tank trap shaped, but you'll get away with them. And they've got a decent weight to them as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, but above all, yeah, three different ways of making tank traps, guys. Yeah. And of course you've got the check hedgehogs, yeah, we covered those in the infantry obstacles, so if you're after those sort, you can go grab them from there. Right, in the meantime, I think it's time for the long shot. Let's wrap it up. So that's it guys, there you go. Three easy techniques for you to give a go and make some awesome tank tracks for your battlefields and really ramp up your, your anti-tank defences. Yeah, get those dragon's teeth going. As always, yeah, if you've got any questions, they belong in the comments. And if you've got any suggestions, anything you think I should add to this video or any, any other different techniques you think people should know about, get them in the comments, guys. That's where it's for. Obviously, like and share this video and all those sort of things. And above all, if you really do like these videos, yeah, and you appreciate them and you want more of them, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, okay? I only ask one single dollar, you know, one dollar a month. It's not much, but it all comes together to get me time in the, in the studio, materials, editing time, and basically make these videos for you. Now, I'd love to make more videos for you, but I can't without your support. So, please consider jumping on board on the Patreon. Just take a dollar pledge, you know what I mean? Yeah, it all helps out. And if you're not into the Patreon thing and, you know, you do want to help out, there's a link to PayPal down in the description. You can send a couple of quid as a one-off, yeah? It all goes in the pot and it all helps. And it all helps me bring in more tutorials for you. So, if you like it, Please consider supporting it, you know what I mean? In the meantime, I'm going to say, listen guys, that's everything, that's all Terraniacs. I've forgotten how to wind up my videos and I think I'm just going to say, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video, yeah? ta -da.